The following podcast is taken from a live broadcast on Inspire FM. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the Book Club Show on Inspire 105.1 FM. My name is Imrana Mahmood and I am your host this morning. Um, so it has been a while since I did my last um, live show. I think it was um, back in Ramadan. It's really, really exciting to be back um, live on air to talk about more books, inshallah. Um, and today I have chosen to talk about the book called The Bone Sparrow, which is by Zana Freylon. Um, now, this is a book actually that I've um, done quite a bit of work um, with recently. So the pilot theatre company um, adapted this book into a uh, theatre production, and it was absolutely am- um, amazing to go see at the theatre. Um, so what I'm going to do is I will give a bit of background. I'm going to read the blurb, and we will talk a little bit about what um some of the themes of the book as well. And I think it's very, very poignant in terms of um, the timing, I guess, to, to discuss this. So um, the book itself, it has a, um, a subheading, which is hope can set you free. Um, so the blurb says, may you forever bring us luck and protection and may you carry our souls to freedom. Subhi is a refugee born in in an immigration detention centre. Life behind the fences is all he has ever known. Then he meets Jimmy, a scruffy, impatient girl from the other side of the fence. This is one story, the story of millions. Um, So that is um, the blurb to give you um, just an introduction to the book. Um, Now, the whole book is actually based on the story of um, Rohingya refugees. Um, Now, that's not obviously mentioned here, but, you know, it kind of gives it away in terms of the fact that um, they're in an immigration detention centre. But I just want to point out, so today, as we do talk a little bit about the book, um, we'll interrogate a little bit of um, the language used. So obviously, um, for anybody who might not know um, some of the background to um, Dorhangi, I think that would be quite uh, important just to start off with. Um, so you would have seen um, probably quite a bit of um, news um over the past few years, especially around the time of um, 2017. Um, But yeah, just to give you a little bit of information about that, and then we can talk about some of the quotes from the book and some of the themes that come up. Um, So it was... Uh, basically a a quote that was said shoot all you see and all you hear so that was a chilling command given to the Myanmar military with the sole aim of wiping out members of the Rohingya community an ethnic Muslim minority group mostly based in the state of Rakhine in what is being recognised as genocide by human rights organisations the UN UN has also described Rohingya as the most persecuted minority in the world Um, now as with many many um, I guess it's a global um, issues, especially uh, because we're living in the UK. We know the impact that colonialism had in terms of the British Empire in the past and obviously the um, effects that that is still having. Um, So just to give you, I guess, a bit of a very brief timeline on um, the Rohingya um, community. So um, it was about 1866 when um, Myanmar was um, part of... um, it was a British colony, basically. Um, now, obviously, there was a bit of unrest because of this, and we know in terms of our own um, communities as well, in terms of um, the partition of India um, and all of the unrest, you know, that was taking place there. And then, obviously, there was um, uh, uh, India, obviously, Pakistan, you know, gaining independence, and then um, later on, Bangladesh as well. Um, now, those things are kind of almost mirrored, I think, across the world, where Britain was... Um, when Britain was kind of an empire. Um, Now in uh, Myanmar itself, um, which uh, also you will know the name um, as Burma, um, there was the establishment of the Young Men's Buddhist Association. Um, Now eventually that um, meant that, you know, I guess young people were coming together to fight the idea of of being um, a colony of of Britain. Um, Now, Burma was then granted its own constitution in 1937. Um, and then after the World War, after World War II, um, it became a, a sovereign state. 
Um, now, what happens, I guess, with states or countries that have kind of um, had, I, I guess, almost like maybe a rebirth might be a good way of, of um, describing it. There's obviously a little bit of um, instability, um, the fact that the British would have left and, you know, that you, you're having to then... Um, govern yourselves again you know which is obviously a, a good thing in terms of independence but in the um in terms of what happened in um burma um so there was general Niwin, and so in 1961 he implemented something called the burmese weight socialism um now this for various reasons it didn't work out and it completely failed um now what happens i think in some countries or many countries is government failures tend to be projected on minorities um, we can see that playing out even in the uk um, and especially ourselves as Muslim communities we know exactly how we can be um, sometimes um, scapegoated whether that was through um, uh, the COVID pandemic or, you know, various, various um, other situations as well. So something similar happened in terms of um, the Rohingya community or the ethnic Muslim community in um, Burma. They essentially became scapegoats for government failures. Um, now, slowly what started happening is that um, the government started passing laws to uh, strip the Rohingya of their citizenship. Um, now, as this happened, there was, I guess, a, um, I guess, almost like a, program of um dehumanizing the Rohingya community <clears throat> and um there started being a, a build-up of violence against them um <clears throat> that tended to be uh, initially quite um in kind of hyper local areas and that started spreading um now eventually what happened is i think it was in about 2016 um when some villages were um literally uh, burnt down by the military um but there wasn't much of um, condemnation from other countries. There was no sort of um, trying to hold them accountable. Um, and this what it basically led to the genocide of the Rohingya people in 2017, where we saw um, a huge, huge amount of um, people seeking refuge in um, neighbouring Bangladesh. And now Bangladesh actually has, um, I think, the the largest um, the largest refugee camp in terms of um, for for the Rohingya community, which is called the Cox Bazaar, which is one of the largest in the world. Um, so that's kind of just to give you a bit of a um, brief timeline um, in terms of what's happened in terms of the Rohingya crisis. Um, now, Zana Fralin is um, the author of this book, The Bone Sparrow. Um, so she ha um, is uh, an Australian um, uh, an Australian author, she's based in Australia. Um, so she obviously was really, really uh, kind of saw what was going on in Australian, um, I mean, they're called detention centres, but obviously um, they actually have um, asylum and uh, asylum seekers and refugees um, who are being detained there. Um, and if she could see, I think, the inhumane way in which um, the, they've been, the Rungi community specifically have been treated in those detention centres. And I think it's really important to note just at this point that the, what Australia has done is um, when uh, the refugees were coming, instead of kind of um, giving them safety um, within their own country, um, they, in essence, and I, I'm kind of quoting the fact that they be, moved them to off offshore detention centers. So it's about taking the refugees and basically putting them in a different place, uh, all in one place together. Um, and again, if you've been listening to um, the news recently, you would have heard about uh, the Nationality and Borders Bill and things that Priti Patel um, in, currently in the UK in our government is, is suggesting about um, taking refugees to, you know, um, Rwanda and, um, off, you know, I think they've used the term uh, uh, processing uh, refugees um, over there. And we know there's a whole massive conversation in terms of what this actually means for human rights, whether that's even legal to do. Um, so unfortunately, it looks like the UK is trying to implement something similar to what Australia has done. Um, and this is despite the fact that I think many um, people in Australia have even done a report that that is really obviously not 
the right thing to do you shouldn't do it um i mean their reasonings might be different but obviously for us um like i said in terms of human rights we do know that this is an absolutely appalling um idea the idea that you can um offshore human beings to another place just because you don't want them here um and primarily because that you know it's comes down to racism it comes down to islamophobia and there's so many things at play um now when i read the book um itself i was you know it was really really moving a very very emotional book um it's written so the main character like i mentioned in the blurb is Subhi, um who's actually born in um the detention center um so a lot of the themes that come out of the book or come into the book um have to do with identity um a lot of them are based uh, around belonging um and what it means i guess to have hopes and dreams even though they are very very um you know you're kind of trapped in essence you're literally trapped and you don't have the ability to dream outside of the fences that kind of um keep you in um you know your own little world and you're kind of forced to to live like that um and i think it's you know quite it the book itself is um it's it's a children book but i guess you could kind of describe it more as it um, a ya book uh, many schools study the book in um year seven or you know in in secondary school in the lower years um i think there might even be some schools that do in year six personally i might i think maybe uh, this book for primary school children might be a little bit heavy um there are aspects in there which um i think you know can be quite distressing um it's possible that young readers they might not actually fully register it um but anyway i would recommend this for for yeah i'd say for year seven um children onwards um and uh yeah so like i said there, there's the main characters which is to be um now what's really interesting is one of the first things that you um kind of learn about in the book um in terms of the theme is identity so there's a quote and the quote um in it um so he's saying most people have their boat id as their number ma is nap 24 and queenie is nap 23 but i was born here so i have a different id dar1 that's me so immediately that gives you an idea of what's happening in in the detention center in this book um the bone sparrow by zana freilon so refugees um are basically no longer um called by their names they're just being given um numbers and letters to identify them um and again you know as especially because i did a lot of work on this book i was um running a few, a few CPD sessions for teachers. And it was really talking about how important are our own names um, and how that, how much of that gives us our identity. Um, and, you know, my name personally, for example, um, Imrana, I know that my, um, my purple named me. So my, um, my um, dad's sister um, and it's, it means, it's from what I um, from what I remember something along the lines of like noble or nobility. Um, I know the the name itself or the word itself is mentioned in um, the Quran. So in Surah Al Imran, and um, there is a bit where you will in Arabic you'll see the word Imran come up. Um, so all these things they kind of give you some sort of connection to your um, could be your yeah your religion or your um, culture it's obviously a connection to your family um you know some people have nicknames and um so all of these things they play such a major role in in who we are and you know maybe in some ways they shape who we are as well um but yeah the idea that our names can be taken away from us and that we're given um you know just uh ieds of some sort is is one of the first things that can happen in order to dehumanize you um so there's a whole um a theme in um the book itself about names and you know about identity and the fact that the characters in uh, the bone sparrow are just given um uh just given these codes you know to identify them um and then it's really you know talking about the fact that how then those people are treated by others and this whole you know idea of, of othering and even you know we think about um our own name 
names, um, especially, for example, if you're from India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, or, you know, other countries which, let's say, are um, uh, non-Western countries. Uh, you know, if we're living in the West, um, you know, people sometimes struggle to say our names, right? Um, and either, you know, we might go through a phase where we allow that to happen and we just... Um, someone mispronounces our name, but we don't really call them out or we don't correct them. Um, or, you know, we allow ourselves to use um, shorter nicknames uh, because we think, oh, you know what, well, maybe my name is a bit complicated to to um, to pronounce. So we allow people to, to use nicknames. Um, but all of these things, you know, it's really important to kind of interrogate why we're doing that. Um, and, you know, we don't always need to have this idea of, you know, we don't need to always make ourselves palatable. If there's nothing wrong, in my opinion, um, if someone mispronounces your name, for you to correct them politely and say, no, actually, this is how to pronounce it. Um, because it's important. It's rooted in um, who we are. It's rooted in language. Um, and it's also a concerted effort that you want to make, that you want to respect um, the other person and you want to give them their due, um, I, I guess, due regard, right, in terms of how that, you know, someone wants to identify. Um, so there's all these things that and themes that come up and I think it's quite important as children read um, this book it's a conversation you can also have with them because even those adults we might wanted to let's say um, assimilate and we allow this actually um, I definitely do that with my children and I say um, look if someone does mispronounce your name even if it's a teacher you know, really politely um, you just say to the note this this is how to pronounce it and you know it's important to uh, personally um, I think to stick to that um, so yeah, so basically, um, names and identity is a, a very um, a big theme in um, the Bone Sparrow itself. Now, what happens? Um, just to give you a bit more information about the story, is so you've got Supi, who's a refugee in the detention centre. Um, there are other characters um, in the book. So um, when I read from the blurb, there is his um, mum, who's mum. And again, just to give you a, a bit of insight, there's. Um, a quote so one day ma stopped the stories the good happy ones as well one day she just said no more looking back only brings sad to me now look forward no more back that was when ma stopped talking to me in wrong year too she reckons that if i speak english then no one will think that i am any different when we get out some days to be ma says some days um sorry some day they see we belong um, now, when you read the story, you know that Ma, um, she's fled violence in Burma along with her husband um, and daughter, Queenie, who is to be sister. Um, and unfortunately, she loses her husband um, and ends up in the detention centre. She gives birth to Subi in the detention centre and then spends a lot of time telling him stories of their time in Burma. Uh, so this is before and after the persecution began. Um, but now throughout the story, eventually Ma becomes more and more quiet and tired and she doesn't eat well. And she ends up being um, monitored to make sure that she's, um, you know, that, that she's well and she's healthy because obviously it's starting to have an impact on her well-being. Um, so there's also then um, Supi's sister. Um, so there's a quote that where she says, the people out there will remember us. Soon they'll see that living here isn't living at all. We just need to show them who we are, that we're people, and that this time they won't forget. Um, so uh, Queenie's um, actual name is Noor, um, but Mark calls her Queenie. Um, so she's Subi's old sister. Um, she's quite supportive, um, but Subi is very, very imaginative sometimes, and she does sometimes tend to make uh, a bit of sense of the I, the amount of optimism um, Subi has, because I think Queenie, being an older sister, having actually seen the outside world, having actually experienced um, Burma um, before persecution, obviously she's struggling being in the detention centre. Um, another main character is um, Eli. Um, so Eli is a friend of um, Subi in the detention centre. He's much older than him, but they have a very brotherly uh, relationship. Um, so he ends up within the detention centre running like a package business because obviously there's no way really of... Um, there's not enough resources, there's not enough uh, of the things that people need. Um, so he tends to do these exchanges with other people in, you know, with other refugees in the centre. Um, but 
so yeah so he has a brotherly relationship with um Estibi and that's quite an important part of the um story as well um then there are two other characters that are Harvey and Beaver so they in the story itself are called Jackets so they're meant to be um the guards in the detention center um now one of them is Harvey um now a quote says all the kids like Harvey some of the other Jackets can be nice enough too but not like Harvey usually the nice ones don't stay too long anyway but Harvey Harvey's been here longer than me even. The first thing Harvey does when new kids arrive is learn their names so that he can talk with us for real instead of talking to us by our numbers. Um, so again, that's coming back to the theme of, of the fact that this is Supi talking about Harvey and how much he appreciates the fact that actually he, um, Harvey calls them by their name. Um, but then um, the opposite of that is another jacket or another guard called Beaver. Um, now about Beaver, the quote is, I reckon Beaver was always mean and that all and the almost being killed just made him meaner. Beaver's the kind of person gives you an extra kick for not getting out of his way fast enough or tips your ma's dinner in the dirt so she has to pick it up with her fingers and eat it fresh from the ground in front of him. Um, so this is obviously um, a character who is basically um not treating uh the refugees um well at all and there's a lot of humiliation um that he's causing um so uh, basically he tra he he lacks any sort of um compassion and actually holds more contempt for the people he's meant to be um i mean you can say helping um but obviously the fact that he's a guard and it's a detention center um obviously kind of changes the idea of, of what that detention center is is there for um so yeah so that's just to give you an idea of, of some of the um characters in the book and obviously gives you an insight in what you know the author um Sandra Fronin is trying to um interrogate in the book itself um but again the strap line that I mentioned is hope can set you free and another main character um in the book is Jimmy um now Jimmy is somebody who um lives near the um this uh, detention center so um she's living in the area where it's based um now, the quote is, Jimmy wants to ask more, wants to find out how they can help so that no one has to sew their lips together, wants to know why they have been locked up in there for so long, why no one is listening, why is it illegal for people to try to save their families, why is it illegal to want to live? Jimmy wants to know. So that is, um, Jimmy's obviously trying to understand what exactly is going on in terms of this detention center, especially when um, she meets Tippi um, and she kind of sees the way that they're having to, um, the way they're having to live really and uh, compares it, you know, to her own life. Now her own life, she all, um, uh, has a bit of a struggle as well. She lives with her dad and, and brother. Um, so they used to move around um, quite a bit um, until uh, her mother passed away. So they stayed in the town, uh, which is in the close proximity of the detention centre. Um, now, I think this, from when you read the lies that the area has quite a lot of um, unemployment. You know, her dad is um, doing various shift work, which means sometimes she's spending a lot of time um, by herself. Um, but yeah, so she ends up discovering a small notebook um, among her um, late mother's possessions, and it has different stories in it. Um, but Jimmy can't actually read. So when she um, has a ends up meeting Subi um, because she finds a detention center and, and, um, and they meet, you know, through kind of the fence. Um, she asks um, Supi to read some of the stories and Supi's learned to read because um, Queenie, his sisters taught, her, um, taught him how to. Um, so they have a connection in this way where they're sharing stories of their own lives. Um, Supi, obviously the stories that his mother's told him, um, Jimmy of the stories that her, um, her mother's written in um, uh, the notebook. Um, so it's a really um, lovely relationship in, uh, in terms of two young people who have their own struggles. I'm trying to, you know, in essence, um, understand the world around them. Um, so I think some of the other themes that, you know, come up, so we've talked a little bit about um, uh, identity, which is obviously uh, uh, um, quite a big one. Um, but there's also, um, you know, about stories and, and storytelling and, and what those um, things mean. And also, you know, the idea of, of language. So we mentioned that, um, 
in you know at one point when Subi says that his um, ma his mother stops talking to him in Rohingya, and again, what does it mean? How important is language, and how important is it you know for us, especially in uh, kind of as we go down the generations, whether we own know our own mother tongue or not. Um, so he's obviously experiencing some sort of loss. So he himself, um, you know, when his mother even stops talking Rohingya, because her assumption is that when they you know if they ever get out of the detention center if he's speaking english that somehow will help him progress more um so you know language is a really big um conversation um to have the importance of it you know how sometimes it gets a bit diluted especially if we don't we no longer live in the country of our origin um and you know the impact that can have on um, the generations to come um so yeah there's definitely a huge feeling of of loss in terms of culture especially because in Burma, you know, the um, when they were there, one of the things was to kind of eradicate even, you know, the, the language um, itself. Um, and then to come into detention center and, and think that actually, you know, I, maybe not to speak it as much. Um, so yeah, there's a lot more um, themes in the book that we will talk about in the second half of the show. Um, but in the meantime, you know, please do grab yourselves um, maybe um, some tea because it is a little bit chilly out there. And I will see you in a few moments. So, assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. This is Atif Nawaz. Listen to Inspire FM shows in your time by heading over to inspirefm.org or listen on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the Book Club Show on Inspire 105.1 FM. My name is Imran Mahmood and I'm your host. Um, and today we were talking just in the first half about the book The Bone Sparrow um, by Zana Freylon. Um, and this is a book which is um, basically looking at the Rohingya um, crisis which happened in um, uh, Myanmar or in Burma. Um, and the story itself is actually set in um, uh, an immigration detention centre in Australia. Um, so we're talking about some of the themes of the book in terms of identity, the importance of names, um, and and just before we went to break, uh, we were talking a little bit about um, language and how um, the impact it can have in terms of um, whether you know your mother tongue um, and how that links into identity. And um, yeah, I guess how you kind of perceive yourself and how others perceive you. Um, now, just before we go into um, talking a little bit more about the themes of the book, I thought it would be nice um, because obviously I've this is a live show i haven't done um one in a while you might want to have a think about other um books um that you can read yourselves and maybe your children can read and obviously it is half term um and um i thought i would invite my children actually onto the show um just for a very quick kind of dip in to see what um they're reading currently um and hopefully it can give you some ideas maybe you can um you know, for, for your own children. But like I always say, I actually love reading um, children's books. I think the amount of, um, I, you know, the, the, I guess empathy that comes through um, because you, I think when you're adults, we get so busy in our lives and, you know, with, with various responsibilities, et cetera, we almost forget to tap into um, and our own childhood and the things that we felt and the things that we learned. And, you know, to hear from um, other children's perspectives, I think is always really, really beautiful. Um, so I'm going to start with... Um, and my youngest, who is Zahra. Um, so what I thought would be really interesting is we're just going to um, do it in a way where I'm going to ask them what they, which book they read previously, which book they are currently reading, and which book they, which is the next book that they'd like to read. Um, so I thought that's always a, a nice way to, to give you, I guess, um, an idea of the type of um, books that people might like. Um, but again, yeah, just to give you maybe some ideas that you can add to your own um, book list as well. So, assalamu alaikum, Zahra. Assalamu alaikum. How are you this morning? I'm good. Good, good. Alhamdulillah. Um, right. Okay. So let's start off with which book, which is the, what is the name of the book that you read um, previously? It's called Ramesa. Ramesa. Okay. And who's written Ramesa? Radia Hafiza. Radia Hafiza. Fantastic. Could you read um, the, the blurb just to give um, listeners an idea of what the book is about? 
Step into a once upon a time where anything is possible. For as long as she can remember, Ramesa has been locked away in her tower, forced to spin straw into gold for an evil witch unable to leave. Until one day after dropping Ping her job out of a small window, Ramesa realizes how she might be able to escape. This funny and enchanting debut weaves together three stories, spinning the classic fairy tale to show that anyone can be a hero. Fantastic. That's very, very um, well read. So that does sound quite familiar. And obviously it says at the bottom, it, it's a, it's kind of almost a retelling of a, of a different fairy tale. Um, so which one is it meant to be like? Um, it's meant to be like Rapunzel. Ah, it's Rapunzel. But this is Ramesa who wears a hijab and throws um, her long hijab out of the tower? Yeah. Okay. All right. What did you like about this book in particular? Oh, uh, like, it's because, like, you can, like, like, um... You can relate to it. You can relate to like yeah. um, the other stories that's put inside it. Okay. Because like it's gonna be like classic stories, mm. yeah. But like for her. Okay, for instead. her. And what makes her in particular relatable to you? What's different about her character compared to um the puns or other uh, characters? Because like they don't wear hijab, but she does. Ah, okay. So you find it okay. So yeah. you find that bit. And quite, then there's yeah. like Muslim characters. Ah, that's all right, fun. that's good. And how does that make you feel when, compared to reading a book like this where maybe there's characters that aren't, um, you know, Muslim or different? How, why, how does this make you feel different? Because, uh, like, you can think that oh, I do that too. Ah, okay, yeah. okay. So you can, yeah. some of the experiences or what, like the way I they... Like, I wear hijab too. Ah, okay, fantastic. Lovely. Okay, so that's really, really good. What we will definitely do one day, inshallah, I think in the future, we should dedicate um, a show to um, the book Ramesa. I think that'd be really, really lovely because I actually haven't read this yet. And actually, yes, it does look very good. Um, okay, so that's the book that you read, the last book you read. Which is the book that you're currently reading? I'm reading the fifth book of Harry Potter. Oh, the fifth book. Yes, yeah. and I can see it's a really, really thick book. Uh, how many pages is in that book? 800. Wow. Wow, that's a lot of pages. That is a lot of pages. Um, okay, so and what is the um, the fifth book called? So it's Harry Potter the what? Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Okay, so this is the book you're currently reading. You're on book five. How many books are there in total for Harry Potter? Seven. Seven. Okay, so you're over half. Fantastic. So what is it in particular then about this book that you're enjoying at the moment? I think because they... Like, all of the books have been, like, plot twisting, but I think this one is quite, uh, like, different and, like, unique type, I don't know. So it's like, plot twisting? Yeah. Are all her, or are all J.K. Rowling's Yeah, I think so. Oh, okay. Like, from the third one, I think it's always been like that. Okay, from the third book, it's yeah. been quite, okay, so that's what you enjoy about it. Mm -hmm. Okay, Um. so how much have you read it so far? You said there's 800 pages. I think pages. around a quarter of it. You read a quarter. All right, yeah. Marshall. Okay, okay. That's very good. Um, so do you want to, I mean, I'm sure there might be a lot of Harry Potter fans out there, not just children, because I know many, many adults um, uh, read Harry Potter and even reading Harry Potter now because they didn't get a chance to when they were maybe younger. Uh, do you want to read the blurb for um, this one? You are sharing the Dark Lord's thoughts and emotions. The headmaster thinks it's inadvisable for this to continue. He wishes me to teach you how to close your mind to the Dark Lord. Dark times have come to Hogwarts. After the Dementors attack on his cousin Dudley, Harry Potter knows that Voldemort will stop at nothing to find him. There are many who deny Dark the Dark Lord's return, but Harry is not alone. A secret order gathers at Grimoire Place to fight against the Dark Forces. Harry must allow Professor Snape to teach him how to protect himself from Voldemort's savage assaults on his mind. But they are growing stronger by the day, and Harry is running out of time. Wow, that does sound like there's a lot going on. Um, I mean, I personally have never read Harry Potter. I know I probably shouldn't even admit that, so my apologies to any harry potter fans um but me and zahra we did have the opportunity to go to um the harry potter um world which is a warner brothers studios in watford so if there are any harry potter fans out there um i would highly highly recommend it i think it's a really brilliant day out uh, just to note though it is extremely it is quite expensive so it's not unfortunately the most accessible thing um 
to go see um but you might be lucky enough there might be some schools that you know might do a school trip um or it's just worth you know keeping a lookout for, for any offers or anything like that but definitely that's um something um to go check out if you are able to um okay so that's the book that you're currently reading what is the next book on your list that you want to read um it's uh, called the, the lion above the door okay and who's written that on Jolly Rolf. Fantastic. Okay. Now, why? What is it about this book that you want to read? Like, why? Why is this next on your list? Um, because, like, I read the other three books of On Jolly Rolf, like mm-hmm. um, the Boy at the Back of the Class and the Star Outside My Window and the Night Boss Hero. So I wanted to read this one too. Okay. Like, so, yeah. A collection. Oh, so you want to have like yeah. a whole collection? Nice. And what is it about On Jolly Rolf's books that you that you like? What, I think they're quite there? hooking and enticing. You think the hooking and enticing, okay. Um, now, what is this book about then? Um, do you want to read the blurb? Yeah, please. Yeah. Ever since I can remember, people have always stared at me and my family. Dad tells me it's because we're special, but there's no, never anyone who looks like us or my best friend Sangeeta. It's my in my hi- school history books. But this year is different because on our school trip to learn about the Second World War, I saw my name, my exact name, carved high above the, a church door, lying beneath a gold lion. I don't know how, who this other person with my name is yet, but I do know that he was a hero, and that changes everything. In fact, with my help, I think it might even change history itself. Wow, fantastic. I mean, I am definitely a fan of, um, um, on Jolly Ralph. I have also read um, lots of her books, and uh, this definitely sounds really, really interesting. Um, and especially, I think, what I was talking uh, before in terms of the bone sparrow and the importance of identity and belonging, um, this book really looks like it might um, kind of be linked to that type of theme. So that looks really, really interesting. Thank you so much, Zahra. So those are your um, three books that you've introduced us to. I hope you enjoy the rest of the Harry Potter book. Um, and obviously, yeah, you you um, will then be going on to The Line Above the Door by Anjali Rao. Fantastic. Okay, so now I am going to go to um, Sophia. So Sophia, um, you are going to obviously talk a little bit about your um, three books. So I will start off by saying assalamu alaikum. Um, how has your day been, um, morning been so far this morning? Good. Good, alhamdulillah. Okay, so um, let's go straight to you. What is the name of the book that you read previously? Um, Return to Raw. Return to Raw, fantastic. And who's written that book? Um, Jenny McClatt. McLaughlin, maybe. Yeah, I think that's, I hope I have pronounced that right. Um, Amazing. Okay, so what is the book uh, about? Do you want to read um, the blurb, please? Um, Twins, Rose and Arthur are so excited to be going back to Raw, their magical world of dragons, ninja wizards, and anything else that and anything else they can imagine. But then the twins receive a sinister message from our enemy, Crokey. What's in the box? The box contains the things that scare the twins the most. If Crokey gets hold of it, he could use it to conjure up Rose and Arthur's worst nightmares and destroy Raw forever. Wow, okay. So it's kind of like, um, uh, listen to that book, is it like an adventure type of book? Are they in like a different place? Or what, yeah. what would you say? How would you describe it? Um, so when it's the holidays, they come to their granddad's house and um, they always like visit this place. And um, mm. it's like a world full of dragons and different mm. like, animals. Oh, amazing. So it's kind of really like fantasy. Okay, yeah, I kind of do enjoy um, books like that. So that sounds really, really interesting. What is there in particular that you liked about that book when you read it? Is there anything in particular? Um, so they went on like an adventure to stop um, a croaky from mm-hmm. getting uh, to the book. Okay, so what did you like enjoy about that? What was it? Because it was the, was it the way it was written, or you yeah. know what? Okay, so it's just the kind of you like writing that you liked about it. Okay, fantastic. Right. Okay. Um. So that's the book that you read previously. What's the book that you are currently reading? 
Um, the Wizards of Once. Okay, who's written that? Um, Chrissida Chrissy Cowell. Yeah, okay, um, Chrissida Cowell. And yes. she's also the author of um, How to Train Your Dragon. Oh, so How to Train Your Dragon. Yes, I know that because I've seen it's a film. I think it's even a cartoon series on TV, isn't it, as well? Um, so obviously they must have based that on um, the her book oh fantastic okay uh, so would you say that's one of the reasons you wanted to read it because you um, liked how to train your dragon or did you find that out afterwards like which um, i found out afterwards oh okay so you didn't know at the time when you read the book that yeah. she'd also written that okay um all right let's read the blurb for this one then um so once there was magic this is a story of a young boy wizard and a young girl warrior brought up as enemies but ha- but have they been so busy fighting that ancient evil has returned unnoticed? Oh, right. So what is it that you're enjoying? Or are you enjoying the book at the moment? Obviously, it's something yeah. you're reading right now. What do you, what do you like about it? Um, so as it said in the blurb, there's, uh, so there's wizards and warriors that are fighting. Mm. And they've been fighting for so long that they uh, they did, they have they don't know that um witches have returned mm, okay so then is this like a story is it not fighting in the story or like what, um, what's going on it's... so they're supposed to be fighting but it doesn't actually describe it like okay it okay but you can okay so that's good so is this something at the moment you know you think it's quite good for your age like obviously it's not too graphic yeah. or descriptive or anything like that in terms of the fighting so like mm. it's good for children yeah yeah because it's obviously it's aimed at children it's, right this, isn't it? it's yeah um descriptive and other things though okay is that and is that a good thing is that yeah does that help your imagination like because it's descriptive or yeah. okay all right that's good um now is this a series of books or it's just a one-off book um i think it's just a one-off one yeah okay all right so it's called the wizards of once did you say okay that's quite interesting quite interesting so why do you think it's called the wizards of once so how does that make sense any Um, idea no no okay do you think when you read more of it you might know maybe yeah yeah okay all right then um right so that's the book you're currently reading what is the next book on your list that you want to read so um the next book is um called wave riders and Zahra um, recommended me to read it. Oh, okay. So Zahra's read it and she recommended it. Yeah. Um, and you wanted to read it. So what, what is, um, who's written that book? Sorry. Um, Lauren St. John. Lauren St. John. Okay. So yeah, let's see the blurb find out. Twins Jess and Jude Carter live a dream life sailing from one exotic destination to the next with their guardian, Gabriel. But after Gabe vanishes and a storm smashes up their lives, they're left penniless and alone. When a wealthy, glamorous family offers them a home, everybody tells them they're the luckiest children in the world. But the black Black Knee's stately mansion is full of secrets, secrets that seem entangled with the twins' own fate. As they race to uncover the truth, Jess and Jude must comfort their deepest fears. How do you solve a mystery when that when that mystery is you? Wow, that's a really, really intriguing question as part of the blurb. Um, what it, it, so when you read that blurb, so Zaha recommended that you read the blurb, so you just thought, actually, yeah, it's, what is it that made you think, yeah, I would like to read this book? Because um, it seems like it's an adventure story. Okay, and you kind of really like adventure stories. Yeah. And what, what do you think about that, that question at the end? How do you solve a mystery when that mystery is you? What does it's, that make you think of? Um, like... It's like a real mystery. Mm, yeah, because obviously, yeah, the idea of having to solve yourself would be quite strange, I yeah. guess, you know. So there's definitely something that makes you think. Um, fantastic. Okay, so that's the book you're hoping to read next. That's absolutely amazing. Um, so I guess I will say thank you to both um Sophia and Zahra for sharing um, their book lists with me. Hopefully, um, to that's given you um, some ideas of what you'd like to read. So, any young listeners that we have at the moment, um, that was a really amazing list there. So, we had The Line Above the Door by Anjali Ralph. We've got Harry Potter. Um, you know, there's a whole series, obviously, of that. There was also Remesa by uh, Vadia Hafiza. Um, and then Sophia was talking about a Return to Raw 
Cowell by Jenny McLachlan, um, The Wizards of Once by Christina Cowell, and then Wave Riders um, by Lawrence St. John. Um, so there's um, a whole list, um, you know, for, for you to choose from if you haven't already. Um, and I would really, really... Um, kind of i guess encourage that if you are reading at home you know form your own little book club so maybe it could be with your friends or with your um family cousins relatives you know even in your own house with your parents you can actually take some time out and if you are reading um the same book you can you know discuss and talk about it and that's one of the most beautiful things about reading um it's something you can do as a individual activity you're doing in your own time um to to kind of relax but then it's something you can also turn into um you know yeah a, a family activity or something to do with friends a social activity which is always really lovely as well um and if there are any um parents um out there specifically uh mums or aunts or anybody who, who's into um reading i do run um uh, the arm in a book club we actually so that's separate from my show for inspire fm um so if you are ever interested in joining us we meet once a month um usually on a tuesday evening um at the moment it's on zoom but we're hoping to start meeting up again in a local cafe um so yeah we tend to meet up and uh, talk about books and it's a really, really lovely um, space. So, you know, if you do ever want to join, please do get in touch with me through, um, you know, studio through Inspire and inshallah I can give you more details. Um, so we are approaching um, slowly the end of the um, second half of um, the show. So I'm just going to bring it back to uh, the book I was talking about in the first half, which is called um, The Bone Sparrow by Zana Freilon. Um, so obviously this book is specifically about the um, Rohingya crisis. If you don't um you know have maybe much information i would really really encourage you to um find out basically more about what is happening because it is really really um quite harrowing i think when we think about the genocide that um occurred there um obviously at the moment there's not enough outrage from the international community um and this is despite the fact that there are so many refugees at the moment in uh, the refugee camp in bangladesh um now amnesty amnesty international itself um endorses the book um the the bone sparrow because obviously um you know as i said when we talk about human rights etc um and there's so many different um questions even at the end of this book itself that amnesty international has um posed posed to the reader so you know for example what does the right to family mean who is Subi's family who is responsible for this situation and what should they do why is it important for us to question what we are told okay so that's another really big thing in terms of um what i think the author zana Freyland is trying to also interrogate so there is a point in the story where the uh, refugees of Subi and queenie and um who is to be sister and then Eli, they come together. Um, some of the, um, some of the people in the, uh, in the center go on a hunger strike. Um, and they manage to get hold of a camera to actually take pictures of what is, um, basically a, a hunger strike protest, so to speak. Um, and they want to be able to get those images obviously into the media, into the news, into the newspapers. Um, but obviously there's a whole question about you know, the way the media sometimes tells, you know, certain stories um, and whether there is enough kind of criticism of, um, you know, Australian detention centres and the way refugees are being treated. Um, and even, like I mentioned, in the UK, this idea of... Um, processing refugees you know in rwanda and you know the ideas that our current government is is trying to um implement um you know how much the media can really call this out and how much we can really challenge this you know whether it's through journalism or whether it's our own spaces it's really really important um to speak up about these things and i think that's really fantastic about having a book like this it, it's a, it starts a, a conversation um now i mentioned pilot theater company of made um a theater production the tour just ended um last month however um they do have some free resources um on their website now i did work with them to develop um some of the resources for english um 
And those are completely free. They're on their website. Their website is www.pilot-theatre.com. Um, so you can uh, go to their website and you can actually access um, some of these um uh, some of these resources and they also have like links to different things um, as well to so different resources where you can actually listen to some interviews with um, with uh, the Rohingya you know uh, people from the Rohingya community um, who actually um, have experienced being in the detention centre and, and refugees etc uh, so there's a lot of resources out there so if you do choose to read the book you know you can access that um, you know, but like I said, the bone sparrow specifically, I would you know recommend it for you know children maybe eleven and over. Um, whereas the other books that um, Sophia and Zaha are talking about, um, you know, those are those I think you know uh, are definitely uh, suitable for for younger readers as well. Um, but yeah, so there you go. So I guess that's kind of a bit of a uh, collage of, of books to add um, to your list itself. Um, now I am hoping um, that. Um, the next few shows, I will have some, you know, uh, writers and authors um, joining me in um, the studio. Um, there have been some new books out as well. So Shalina, um, Shalina Jam Muhammad, who wrote Love in a Headscarf, she's got a book out which is called uh, Be Be You Tiffle. Um, so it's a play on words. Um, so inshallah, um, I'm currently in the process of hoping that we can have. Um, her join us. Uh, I've also been talking more to um, a local publisher. So there's Formi um, CIC, who are a lovely um, book publishing company based in Newton. And inshallah, we will have them on talking about um, uh, some of their work as well. Um, there's also... Um, I think it's just generally um, different books that we can talk about. So I would love to have your um, suggestions, um, inshallah, as well. So if you, if there are any books that I've maybe never, not got to um, got around to talking about that you've really enjoyed, or maybe there's a book that you've come across that you'd like me to kind of review for you on the show. Again, please do send your ideas and suggestions to Inspire FM, um, and you know you can do it through um, through the website um, via email. You know. Uh, however is best um, to contact them and inshallah I will definitely have um, have a read and share that with you if you're ever interested in being on the show as a guest I love to have um, people to talk to um, on the show as well so please feel free um, to uh, contact me uh, about that but in the meantime I hope you have a lovely week please do keep us all in um, your du'as and inshallah I will be back soon with a new book and inshallah a new author so speak to you soon assalamu alaikum thank you for listening to our podcast why not tune in to our live stream at inspirefm.org and follow and subscribe to our social media platforms at inspirefm luton